Hello. In an earlier video recording, I showed you how to use Plato with G4Tran and i Fort. Now I'm, I'm going to describe how to write Clearing programs uh, using Plato, uh, first for just FTM95, and then uh, for those who want to write in any or all of these different, using all of these compilers. Let's uh, begin by creating a new project. And we'll select, in this case, a Clearwin Plus application. And later when we want to combine with G4Tran or i then we'll use uh, an ISO clearing application. But for now, we're just looking at FTN95. I'll give it a name and use the default folder. And let's uh, add some code. Before uh, finishing that setup for a new project, Program project, you get a dialog which allow, uh, enables you to change the name to ch to add a caption of your own choosing to a clear win window. Then there are optional components you could add. I'm going to choose an edit box, uh, and then can select a number of buttons and choose what appears on the caption for the buttons. We then add the code and we uh, what Plato does for you is to generate a sample program with the components that you've asked for. It takes the form of a module and running, creating the dialog, it simply calls a function called dialog1, which is in the module and contains the components for the window. So if we just uh, compile and link and run that, then we get the result with the given caption, the buttons, and an edit box, which you can type into. Now, of course, it's not complete, but it gives you the uh, framework that you can operate with. Uh, now, once you have one dialog, you can add other dialogs simply by adding a new file, adding a new item to the project. And if we add a Clearwin Plus dialog file, we can and provide the name for the file this time, dialog2, say, dot f95. Again, it goes into the project folder. And just open that. And again, we get uh, a dialog to allow, which allows us to make uh, choices. Uh, and uh, maybe this time we're just going to have a simple message with uh, one button with an OK as the caption. We add the code to that. And, and that gives us a second file with the new dialog. Now, of course, the main program is only accessing dialog one at the moment. So let's simply change that to a different module and a different dialog so that when we build it uh, that, uh, the listing is not in the right order at the moment so we'll have to just uh, rebuild the dependencies 
and then run it and that is the result of our sample code. Once we've uh, added code in that way, we can uh, add further components. Uh, we so select Alt plus W in that window, and that produces a pop-up menu, which uh, allows you to choose different components. And we already have a caption, but uh, and we already have a background color, but we could add uh, a toolbar. Let's try that. The toolbar can be this form, which is a standard toolbar, or it could be a form which is called a view toolbar or a history toolbar. It can be take a position at the top, the bottom or the left. I'm going to go for a standard. You can choose from the different options here and then click on OK. And that adds more code to the existing dialog. Uh, and, and the index is provided and the style is provided for the different buttons in the dialog. And so when we come to build and run it, I, I need to go back to the main program and change back to dialog one to see the changes I've made. Now we have the edit box with the buttons as before, but now this toolbar, which has uh, different buttons chosen from that standard menu. And the uh, values selected from the menu uh, will depend on the, the numbers inserted into this index. This is an index into a uh, bitmap strip with the index zero for the first uh, bitmap, one for the second and so on. And the zero there is because there's a, a space. Uh, these are standard buttons, the style of standard button zero, standard button, and then this is a space, and then another, another standard button. So if you use percent MB uh, with the uh, index and the style, uh, then uh, you get this, uh, this result. So there are similar um, opportunities, similar code that you can provide. Uh, and uh, you can go on to use Alt plus W to provide, uh, for example, a, a main menu. Uh, here, let's see what we get for that. Well, you, you can choose between main, general, and pop-up. A general pop-up or a pop-up for a control. If we select a main, then initially the main menu contains file, edit, and help, and those can be changed just by typing in. And each of those, as you select it, will allow you to change uh, the components of the corresponding drop-down. For example, if we select or put the cursor on help, we could change that perhaps to uh, about. We can add various other things as well to a particular uh, menu item and then click on OK, and that will add the that toolbar so that when we come to run it again, we now have uh, a main menu with the items which we typed in, edit, we had, and this is the about item which we've just changed. So in that way, you can continue to add 
components, uh, what you do is you select the line that, where you want to uh, add code, and the code will be added after that line. You then press Alt and W and, and select from all of these uh, possible items to include. And in most of the cases, you will get a dialog box to say what you want in that particular component. Sometimes it will just give you a, a standard form straight off. Just uh, as, as a reminder, there are other ways that Plato helps you uh, when you uh, creating Windows uh, Clear Win Plus programs. Uh, one is that uh, in the view menu, you can look at the clip library and there you can uh, choose to add snippets of code. Uh, for example, you could add a, a radio button uh, just to see what that is. You could try editing it and you see that's the, the clip uh, text that you would uh, get when you when you double click on that particular item. As well as the clip library, uh, you get help. Uh, for example, if you select a format code and press F1, then you uh, get the help text on that particular format code. Uh, again, if you position the cursor after a bracket and uh, then uh, use the right click, then you get, again, options to add different components directly uh, into the code at that point. So you would actually write uh, WinIO uh, brackets and then and nothing else, and then you'd do a right click. And one more uh, facility is that uh, if you uh, position the cursor before a closing square bracket and then do a right click, then in many cases, you will get a list of the options that you can use in that particular format code. And you can add those options, or you can at least see what the options are for that uh, particular format code. So those are the uh, help facilities which are already there. And uh, we have an extra one now in the ability to add sample code. OK, well, I'm going to close that project now and look at the second part, uh, creating, writing a clue in program uh, you, for FTN 95 and possibly G Fortran and I Fort. Start by creating a new project. And this time we'll select ISO, the ClearWin Plus application. We'll give it a name, call it test two. And let's put some sample code in to start off with. It's called dialogue one, which I'm happy with. So let's uh, put in a, a caption. Uh, my app, uh, some content. Let's do a simple message this time with a message which you, I can change and one button which has OK on it. Add the code. <clears throat> and, and this time we have sample code as before, but in addition, we have this extra file which has been imported for us into the project. And that file contains the interface uh, using IS, ISO C binding, the interface uh, into the ClearWin library. And that file is, is imported from the 
uh, a folder in the, the Silver Frost compiler folder. And it means that uh, the interface will be provided and built automatically uh, for the particular compiler that we're using. So uh, let's have a look, see how it works out. Again, we'll uh, press Alt and X to get the select a particular compiler after choosing uh, x64 platform uh, first of all let's uh, build and run for ftn95 that's the result of our choice we've got a name in the caption we've got a standard icon that's but what we've ended up with percent si star <clears throat> and then the message and an OK button from here. Uh, and in that process, it's actually compiled the uh, OEOIN 95 file for the interface. And now when we come to select G4 tram and do a compile link and run then this time we have the same result but it's using the g4 trunk compiler and it's equally uh, if we do the same for i fort then it, it's used the i4 trunk compiler and it's created the the dialogue in, in the same sort of way Uh, and uh, all of the details are as before. Uh, uh, apart from that, you, the only all we need to do is to select the uh, form of project that uh, I have indicated. And you notice that in this form, the WinIO statements end up with a dollar, and all of the uh, ClearWin Plus uh, routines will. Uh, likewise end up with a dollar to make it portable to other compilers. And in principle, you can use the same uh, interface, the same bindings for any third party compiler that uh, accepts WinAO statements in the same way as is used by FDN95. So that's re really basically relates to how strings are passed. And that will only be compiler dependent, but uh, most compilers like uh, G-Fortran and i will use the same mechanism for passing strings as that used by the Silverfrost compiler. So that uh, completes our uh, demonstration for uh, this uh, using uh, writing or creating sample code uh, for uh, ClearWin applications. And that is potentially very powerful. It doesn't do everything for you. You have to link things together uh, in you know, it doesn't actually write the program for you, but it gives you sample code to get you started. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy that.